Grey Liz, and today I am here with Brian. I'm here again. Uh, we're we're gonna talk about Game of the Year predictions. Um, we're gonna talk about six games that we believe deserve Game of the Year, and our list is kind of similar, but there are a couple that are different. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're just gonna talk about it and yeah. kind of as a little explanation of like why we believe it's. Yeah. Also, I want to I want to caveat. Today is November the seventeenth, so tomorrow, tomorrow Jeff Keeley is going to be actually announcing what the categories are and what the nominees are. So this is going to kind of our prediction for what we think is going to be in the categories, and we'll probably do another video about who was actually going to win Game of the Year. But so I think how we should do it, we'll talk about the similar sixes of our choices, and then at the end of it, we'll probably do a realistic. Um, a realistic prediction prediction on what will actually be yeah. nominated let's just say these are the, the, our top six experiences of gaming where they're playing or watching each other play because there are games that she played that i didn't but i can recognize the greatness yeah. yeah all right so let's start off with wukong that's a that's an obvious one for me um i finished that game i'm very close to platinum i'm on my second playthrough i uh, just got to erlang and i'm not having a good time uh, but Wukong for me, it's just, uh, it was really different. It was graphically amazing. I feel like it was the most purposeful game that was created this year. Purposeful in a sense where like everything had meaning. The bosses had meaning, the atmosphere had meaning, the music had meaning, just everything was story. perfect story, of course. Um, and yeah, any other things you want to add to I Wukong? mean, I played it, I haven't, I think I got to, and this is just because of timing and everything like that. Like I got to chapter two, so I beat the first chapter and I kind of just fell off a little bit. Like I had gone through a bunch of stuff with similar games and I just kind of got burnt out from the, the boss rush. So I got to chapter two, but I have played it. And I've watched her play the entire thing. I've watched most of the boss battles, like boss battles, and it's an absolutely sensational, phenomenal game. Um, from the yeah. people at studio, I forgot what the name of the studio is. Um, uh, game, game Science. Game Science. Yeah. Uh, that for their first game, for their first AAA game, it was absolutely insane, and it's a it's a showcase of what the Unreal Engine is and really full of. What I really respect about Black Myth Wukong is the fact that it wasn't another Japanese shit. Which nothing against Jap Japanese like culture or anything, but I feel like in the games industry with like cyberpunk and Greek mythology and Japanese uh, times, I just feel like China came in and they're just like, you know what, we're fucking dope too, check us out. And it was just so refreshing to me. That's why I respect it very much. Yeah, I think it's the only second Chinese mythology game that I've seen. You have Wukong mm. and then of course you had um, a Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Those are the only two that come off the Wulong. top of mm -hmm. yeah, of like Chinese mythology. And it's yeah. such a breath of fresh air. very near. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know what our second game is, uh, Astro Bot. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not in any order, but these are the ones that we agree on. Yeah, Astro Bot, <laughs> without a doubt, like Team Asobi and what they've been able to do for <laughs> for to be able to showcase that game is a showcase of what how amazing this thing is like and it's just a phenomenal game there's so many easter eggs so many characters i mean it doesn't matter if you got into playstation last year or if you got back into play if you had an original playstation one it this game has something for anyone who's ever enjoyed playstation it's just a love letter to playstation plus I, I i also want to add the fact that I think Brian and I were talking about it the other day, and we can actually agree that it's the first game we both consider polished. Like an actual perfected, there is no mess, no screw up anywhere. It was just graphically consistent and fun wise. My heart, like when he was talking about Astro, I was just smiling the whole time because this game really did so much to me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I honestly feel like as a platformer game, like he makes Mario and Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and everything along the line look boring. And I really respect that because I didn't care for Astro Bot. Obviously I played like the VR on the PS4 and then the demo that came with the PS5 and I didn't care too much about it. But then when the game came out, it just shifted my whole attitude towards no, it. I can tell you when it did change. When you when we got hands on at Evo this year and you played the first level. Oh my God, that I, was pretty sick too. But definitely Astro Bot, there's not much else we need to say about yeah, Astro it. Astro Bot is, is one of the best platformers ever made. And it's, yeah, 100%. 
Uh, next one is uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth. This is my uh, this is my personal pick for best game. Like her personal pick for best game she's played this year is Wukong. Mine is Final Fantasy Rebirth. I mean, this game is an epic story. It's just it's so massive. It's so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. The combat, like coming from Final Fantasy 16, where that combat system was, I was reluctant when it came to Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. But when you're able to kind of really go through and manage it and it clicks in the multiple character system and you're able to swap out your characters at will and do combos and, and, and even change your party up and how beautiful the game is and just how they have literally redone everything to perfection, like, you know, Shout out to Square Enix. It's such an underrated studio, and they do so well with everything that they put their hands on. So the Final Fantasy Rebirth is not a game that I invested time into. First, I tried to, and then I just felt like, cinematics-wise, it was over the top, very draining. The characters were sort of annoying, especially the women in Final Fantasy VII. And I hate to say that because they were more like very childish and I understand that it's like that Japanese kind of culture kind of translated to English so they probably can't capture it as authentically as the Japanese do uh, but to me that was kind of like a little off-putting I found the characters really annoying uh, the cinematics were beautiful and admirable but just draining just draining and I don't and I and I know that I've, I've never bought up I was never gaming and bought up with Final Fantasy. So I'm a very late bloomer. So in that regard, I'm not a big Final Fantasy person, but that's not to take away anything from Final Fantasy. I can admit that it's up there with Game of the Year. It's on my list. I would never play it, um, but as a gamer and as a knowledgeable person who knows what I like and who can respect games for what they are, I can see how it could be Game of the Year. Um, but yeah, I mean, so much detail as a lot you can do in Final Fantasy VII, maybe too much. Yeah, I think that if I had if, if I had to have one, the only drawback I could say about Final Fantasy, like all the things that she like, every, the how it it has its tones. Like Final Fantasy, ha Final Fantasy VII has those kind of childish fun tones. It has those serious tones. It has those, you know, it has those. It has everything. Um, if that's that's the only thing that I kind of have an issue with is, I feel like the game would be a bet would be better if it was smaller and you'll right. never hear me say that it's like me saying a car has a little bit too much power which is weird but like if they scaled it back a little bit i mean i'm 70 hours in that game and yeah this i beat the story that's i've yeah. gotten that far and i mean there's probably another do you believe that i personally don't see it but for someone who actually finished it do you believe final fantasy has replayability Oh, without a doubt. Would oh, you do it? Would I do it? Not this year. Was that tell, like I wouldn't? I, I that's would, what we all say until we never play it. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of <laughs> like that's the thing. Like I mean, I, I I I grinded the story, and that was every bit of sixty to seventy hours. I did a good chunk of side quests, but like it's still so much more to get into that game. And like I said, and this is only part two of a trilogy, so there's going to be an additional oh, version. Right, so right. you know, I think it was. I, but still, beyond that, I think that everything about this game was sensational. And it's my pick for game of the year. I think it's the prettiest game of the year as well. Um, all right, so number three. Uh, no, four. We're at four, because mm -hmm. we both was number four. Mm -hmm. uh, three, oh my goodness. Um, Warhammer, Space Marine 2. Yeah, Warhammer, neither, let's caveat, neither one of us know much about the Warhammer lore, or we were never big Warhammer fans. And you know, don't, don't kill us in the comments. We just never really got into it um but this year like i mean and I, I think i'm the one that kind of brought it to your attention because before the game came out i started like peeking and paying attention I'm like this game looks pretty epic and i'm like it gives me gears of war vibes like you know and it's that's kind of what it is like it's if you've never even if you don't have to understand anything about warhammer it tells you enough to get through the story it's a complete mashup of gears of war meets doom and I mean that in the best way possible. You know, it's, you know, you can do the campaign with three people 
you know and it's just and it's just action-packed moment after action-packed moment you know the swarm system where you see you're Disgusting. fighting and you're just and it's these aliens or these xenos coming in no matter how close or far they are it's just you so see, beautiful you can detailed. see them coming in the background and they're coming to you and when I we think, were playing sorry there were there were at points where i'm like is this real or is this just like a background graphic sort of thing and then when i see them all sort of charge towards me i'm like yo like that's actually impressively detailed for the amount of creatures coming in your direction and they are all individual creatures coming towards you instead of just a big blob of stuff kind of coming towards you and i honestly um i was very in awe graphically i feel like it's one of the most detailed games and i'm talking detailed whether close or far as well and to me that stuff really matters like even if it's just a simple detail like a bird flying in the background in the distance like it's unnecessary but it's there and i think that it's hard to ignore especially for someone like me who is a very detailed and graphic sort of heavy gamer is it the great is it the best looking game this year no but um, it's for it's what, pretty up there but, like it's what, impressive it is but for what they were able to do that like how it does it i'm not sitting here saying that the game looks as good as i think we both agree what the best looking game of all time is um horizon horizon yeah uh, but it's not it's not that but just how it it has that big clunky gears of war vibe even how it yeah. looks it's yeah. very gears of war i think it's a modern day gears of war and yeah. i'm i'm all for it 100 percent yeah um and that's all really i want to say about uh warhammer it deserves its flowers and um yeah this year is just very interesting with game of the year because usually i would be butthurt when some of them Oh, you know what I mean? Like, oh my god, there's only one game this year, but there are actually like five, which is crazy. And I'm okay with all of them, uh, even though, you know, I, I mean, have my this, preferences. This year, this, this year, deliver unless you are, I'm going to say this, unless you're a racing game fan, this has probably been the greatest year for whatever category of games that you play because this year deli we've this year got delivered from everything. on everything. Mm -hmm. If you're a fighting game fan, this year has been the best year for fighting games in a long time. If you're an RPG fan, if you're a horror fan, it doesn't matter. This year has delivered on all accounts. All right. So this is where Brian and I differ. So we've got two more because uh, we're going for six for game of the year and my two are different to brian's two so you can go uh so the first and the first game that i played this year i do think it was the first game i played this year was grand blue fantasy relink absolutely love that game um kind of has hints of monster hunter a little bit of hints of final fantasy got that it's an action rpg story is kind of wacky but there are some moments in the combat where you're just like whoa i can't believe this is going down it's multiplayer as well i mean you have your you have it's it's you have but i don't they've been adding characters i can't tell you how many characters there are but each character has a different weapon set that you know that's how you play and whatever one you like you have you, you're fighting monsters you're it's just a sensational game and that was my first gaming experience this year and it kicked off i actually played it as well i never finished it i know you finished it yeah. i've never finished it and i've really respected how different it was i'm not a really anime sort of jrpg type person because i find that they're all sort of the same and they don't have anything like it's extravagant to me um but grand blue really like flipped that on me i was like damn like i get it now i understand why jrpgs are lit and yeah. why they have such a a big respect and a big following of people um and so my um uh, fifth one I'm, I'm gonna say black ops 6 now i'm i'm like I'm not a Call of Duty person at all, um, but I will be the first to admit that Call of Duty is one of, if not the biggest game in the world, you know, and not putting GTA aside, so I'm not talking about GTA, but like Call of Duty is humongous, okay? And I've played every single one of them, not all the way through because they all felt like the same, but I feel like with Black Ops 6, as much as it was the same, it felt different and graphically enhanced and just a little bit more like, a purposeful black ops rather than just rinsed and repeated same kind of stuff i think graphically i'm just constantly talking about how beautiful that game looks as well like, i can't even tell what's cinematic or what's 
Like, yeah, it's, realistic. It's a, like, it's, it's, they took their time with it. Really, and it's really just like, cool. you know, kudos. Zombies is also super dope too. Like it actually added some extra funk to it. Um, the online, again, not something that I go out of my way to play because I'm a selfish gamer. I don't like playing with people. Leave me alone. Um, but I really respect Call of Duty and I know that Call of Duty probably is not going to be the game of the year, but I feel like Black Ops 6 is at least helping them get there. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, because Call of Duty has been coming out year and year and year after year and year after year, but never has ever been in talks of game of the year. But I, I feel like Black Ops Six has got like potential this year. I think this, the this, the campaign mode is the best know. campaign that we've seen in a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought back some of the things that you know make some of those nostalgic feelings happen. You know, with some of your older Call of Duty players and uh, the the Omni movement system is kind of actually I thought it was I, I thought it was very gimmicky at first until I tried it so I played the open beta of Call of Duty um Black Ops 6 and then I immediately went back when the beta ended I went to went back to Modern Warfare uh just playing online and you can definitely tell a difference in the movement and it's just like i felt like yeah. i was taking a step backwards therefore i can acknowledge that they've taken a step forward when even something as simple as the movement with call of duty right. now i know that there's some random some random things that people have been doing online with kick flips basically but you know the average person i think it's really really cool yeah. uh and yeah your last number no, six. your last one me first yeah and I'm going to say this only because I've played it. I'm going to say this because I feel like remakes deserve their own category, but I don't hear about it and I don't foresee it happening because there's only so many remakes that could be done in a year type thing. So maybe they don't need their own category, even though I believe they do. I'm going to go Silent Hill too. Um, and I'm a horror game fan and I feel like a, a remake of a game that's been perfected, kind of like... Resident Evil 4. Um, even though Resident Evil has been remade four or five times over, the fact that Bloober Team uh, took it into it under its wing and you know have modified it to a, a perfect way where it scared the absolute bejesus out of me throughout the entire game. I never recall a game doing that to me. Actually, I do, and it was probably the first Dead Space. Mm. like genuine consistently shit myself type horror and i really respect that because as a horror fan nothing scares me everything excites me you know uh especially movies like i never get scared watching horror movies i'm just there for the excitement and to celebrate horrible shit but this game just got me this game got me i love a game that gets me and i i was got if that's even a word or a sentence that i could say um much respect bloober team hell yes soundtracks graphic like everything yeah. graphically everything this game is beautiful to me so i don't see it happening but it'd be nice just to yeah, I mean it could be. I mean, I'd say, I don't. Like, I don't think so. I'm gonna be really real with you guys. Well, well, um, well you know, because there are other games that I haven't mentioned that yeah. I know will be more powerful. Yeah. Well, while she was getting the bejesus scared out of her, I was downstairs playing. Yes. Sparking zero. Sparking zero. Sparking zero for me as a lifelong Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. It just gives me everything. I played the original Tenkaichi Budokais or Budokai Tenkaichis and I mean it just has everything whatever you would if you are a Dragon Ball fan Dragon Ball over Tekken oh without a doubt like Tekken was cool until Dragon Ball came out like Tekken is great because no. Tekken was good because oh man it was like I feel like I'm playing an anime when I'm playing Tekken Dragon Ball you are playing an anime as you're playing like I mean, it brings back characters from my childhood. Like, my tag team is Janemba and Cooler and Kid Gohan. Like, I couldn't have done that anywhere else, you know? Along, But now I can add my newer favorite characters like Goku Black. It's just, it's everything. I love the even the what-if scenarios where how they take the story that you know and love and then add what-ifs to it. Like, if you go in a different path, like, well, what happens if Gohan beat Frieza when he came to Earth? And how does that whole story plan out to, uh, spoiler alert, it leads to, instead of it being a Goku Black, is a Gohan Black. And it's just absolutely insane. That sounds kind of hot. I like Goku Black. Yeah, that's what I'm like. And it's just so, as far as like, I mean, for fighting game, it's is it balanced? No, don't care. 
I, I don't care. If I want to play a balanced fighting game, I'll go play something else. But as a fun fighting game, it's not just the best fighting game to come out this year for me. It's one of the best games of the year, which is why it goes in that category. So, so Ryan, do you have an uh, honorable mention for this year? Oh, hell yes. You. I, I have two honorable mentions and my second honorable mention is what he's going to talk about. But my honorable mention of 2024 is Stellar Blade. Now, I have to express to you just really quickly, because I know this video is dragged on, why I respect this game so much. I was very at the beginning like, oh my god, fan service, they're gonna over sexualize women and it's gonna piss me off. And you know, why are her tits so jiggly? It's unrealistic, it doesn't even make sense, and it's stupid, and her ass is annoying, and it drops like tits, and it just pissed me off. I'm gonna be really blunt. And then um play the demo and I <laughs> I was shocked how sick this game was. So anyway, the game came out and I finished it. Okay, I finished the game and then I played it again two times on top of it back to back now story-wise shit dumb the word nitiba was annoying and just what about alpha nitiba <laughs> shut up no it was it was really stupid but the fact that you got to play as a badass barbie i like to call eve barbie because you get to dress her up. And I I was just like, damn, this outfit is so revealing and so over the top and over sexualized, but it's so hot. And I wanna see her in more different outfits. And the fact that this game fully did a 360 on me with how I felt about it, as opposed to what I really feel about it now. Um, Celebrate is the only game besides the Tomb Raider reboot that I played multiple times after finishing it and i just respect that so much soundtrack oh my god i listen to um the, the Ido 7 soundtrack almost every day every day i love it i love every it every day i love it uh so yeah stellar blade is my honorable mention um mine is a game that nobody talks about but it came out this year and i don't know what the ratings were maybe sevens or eights or whatever but i think that this game absolutely deserves its flowers and that's rise of the ronin from team ninja um when you play a team ninja game you kind of know what you're going to expect you're going to get that neo experience gaiden. that you know like you know either neo ninja gaiden you know wulong we talked about earlier but we when I played this game I was so surprised at how fluent and how how like just how just polished the combat was and it's everything that you thought about from a team ninja game that it would have which I, I think we love pretty much all team ninja games we do um especially Neo and it was just better love the atmosphere that 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 japan that the era of japan the that feudal era where it was just like you also going through this conflict where you have you know you're this you're this ronin who's also trying to shape the future of japan like do you want to go more of the traditional side where you want to you know pretty much get rid of all of these foreign invaders or do you believe in a change where japan should open up its borders and kind of be more be more i guess uh yeah, more welcoming to like the western world and how you play it and you have this twin and you just it, it's just a phenomenal yeah. game and to create your second character as yeah. well and to go against them during the game is amazing um i'm and and with all due respect, you guys. I don't know people on this channel know how I feel about Ghost of Tsushima. I think it's the world's most overrated game because I just found it very boring. There was nothing about Ghost of Tsushima that was groundbreaking for me, except for how beautiful the, gra the grass and the trees, uh, you know, blue in the wind. Um, but beyond that, I feel like Rise of the Ronin was the Ghost of Tsushima game I never got. I think Rise of the Ronin was a better game. Like, I like I don't think we've ever played Ghost of Tsushima. I've, no, you've played. I've I watched, finished I've, that I've, I finished, yeah. I watched you play it. And it's but it took like, me three months to finish a game. And that doesn't take me that long to finish a game. It's it was kind of like that Assassin's Creed where I'm just like... Yeah. It's so repetitive it's that so, I don't, I'm not in a rush to but really know what's going on. It's also so... It's so fun because, you know, just like... 
how the combat is and just how the play how the gameplay is i mean you could be gliding on your little glider and then on the see horse, it, you know? on the horse and then you see a point of interest you go you do your little hook thing you go up in the air you fly you jump down you kill an enemy and just keep going and it's just it's, it was very fluent. it's very fluent yeah very, very fluent, fluent so. i really respected that all right b so to close off this video um what are the realistic just give me we can look at our list here just at the top of your head give me the actual not brian what's what's gonna happen type shit uh top top six yep um apparently there's some controversy with wukong i haven't looked it up but i don't really care uh wukong final fantasy 7 um astrobot metaphor refantasio oh I'm missing one uh i'm going to still say warhammer i'm gonna say warhammer is that five or is that six um and if i'm picking one i'm also going to say maybe dragon age uh i'm just gonna go wukong warhammer hell divers 2 just because of popularity's sake and how crazy that game blew up when it did sometimes that's all a game needs you know what i mean to get that recognition and to get that hype you know um i also think rebirth definitely um i'm gonna say um astrobot did i say astro already no i did not say astrobot and um probably uh dragon age Valguard. it's a game that i'm not interested in but i've seen a lot about it and i understand the audience and what they have built throughout the years of dragon age games so you know um you can't not respect what a game when a game has power mm. right yeah um but uh, also i want to i do want to close out by saying this like everything that we've talked about up until this point really doesn't matter mm -hmm. because it's just, we, it's just well no not even that man. because there was an event that happened this year that unfortunately we can't put in this category but we know it was the best thing to come out this year what and that's mean? simple it's monster hunter world beta I mean, oh Rock, my Wild God. Beta. No, i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking he's you definitely just really excited for monster hunter wild and yeah, if you the played monster, the beta the monster hunter wild so beta sick. was the beta was the best thing to come out this year <laughs> Let's um chill out shadow of the earth tree let's not play yeah, that let's, now let me it's, tell you I'm gonna play, no, let me close we know. this video out by i'm not mentioning elden ring because they got elden the ring already won elden ring is forever the winner year after year after year after motherfucking year elden ring will always win okay so the only reason why i did nominate i would be so excited to see it nominated just because Elden I know. Ring. <laughs> I know. Like, I mean, let's but like, but let's, let's, let's like I said, let, like we're, I think we're both in agreement that like realistically, if it's in there, it's unfair. Elden, but... Elden Ring is the best gaming experience. Elden Ring: Shadow of the Earth Tree is the best gaming Nothing experience. Nothing can compare to Elden Ring. I don't care what people say. You can deny it all you want. You can talk about how graphically unimpressive Elden Ring, but let me tell you, if you're a gamer, then you play the motherfucking game and you leave the graphics to the side. Sometimes I'm a very graphics-heavy person, but if I can sacrifice graphics for great game i mean i think the world i, I think i think the world is all in that because yet again we all we both agree best looking game of all time horizon horizon forbidden west how many awards has it won <laughs> But yeah, you guys, thank you, Brian, for this video. It's really nice. We talk like this every day, every second that we have a moment to talk. It's always like this. So we thought we may as well talk about it with and in front of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. What are your thoughts for Game of the Year, man? Like, do you do you think? Yeah, I want to know. Like, know, I, like I said, I mean, are we we love. My to... list was better. I mean, I also just like reading the comments and seeing what people say. Like, I'm really curious. Like, I want to know what. What are the top six gaming experiences that you've had this year? Your list could be completely different. Just give us six, please, guys. Just please write down six of your game of the years this year, and I just want to go through them and, and be like, damn, we missed that. <laughs> we yeah. missed that. Like, it's really hard to. And keep plus, if, if, if we get, if for me personally, if I'm like, right now, I'm kind of in a down period with games right now. So it's just like, if I see something. Oh yeah, That's I know the that. Best down but like, game to but play. like, if somebody, if I keep seeing, like, for example, if everybody keeps saying you need to play Metaphor Refantasia, if I see Metaphor Refantasia a bunch of times, I might be like, you know what? Maybe I'll download it and check it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't. I'm not against turn-based games, but you know, why not try it? Mm -hmm. So but yeah, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think for Game of the Year, and we will see you in the next video or 
on Twitch streaming something cool. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. Bye.